This week's word of the week is going to be preheat, all right? On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 not being a big deal, 10 being a huge deal, to overall understand what preheat is and the materials that you're going to use preheat on and, and circumstances that you're going to use preheat, it's probably about an 8. It's pretty important. So the way I'm going to run this video is kind of going to when you would use preheat, um, why you would use preheat, and again we'll, we'll do uh, how to actually apply the preheat. There's different ways of actually applying the preheat here. So I'm going to start right off the bat with materials, and when I first think of preheat, the material that I think of is cast iron. It's just the way I think. Um, cast iron needs to be preheated every time. The reason is it has such a high carbon content, so high carbon steels and things like that, they're going to require um, um, preheat. So that would be the first instance of when you would need preheat. The, depending on the material you're using, it can automatically require preheat. And a lot of times in codes it will say, if you're using this material, it, preheat is required and it will even give you the temperature range of the preheat. So we're going to go right down here to codes. I just mentioned code. Um, codes will tell you that you need preheat. So that's another reason of when you would use preheat. The code's telling me to use preheat, so I'm going to use preheat. I'm going to skip down here underneath that to WPS. So the welding procedure specification is going to be written to a certain code as well. And I think it's important to understand that all WPSs will have a preheat section on there. And if it doesn't require preheat, it will just say 60 degrees Fahrenheit or 70 degrees Fahrenheit, basically the temperature of the air. And the reason that they're going to put uh, 70 degrees is because if you're in a really cold environment, they want you to at least be in like an ambient temperature situation. So the WPS is going to tell you the preheat. But I think it's more important to know that if you get cast iron, the welders should know, all right, I need preheat. You already, you already know before you even read a WPS that you need uh, preheat with certain materials. So that's something I would strive for as a, a welder in the welding world. You know the materials that require preheat already because you're experienced and you're educated in, in the field of welding. So the WPS will tell you, but like I said, I think if you know you're welding cast iron, you should automatically know you're gonna need preheat, right? Um, thick plates is the next when you would need to preheat. If you're welding thick plates, they're going to want you to preheat that to let that heat travel throughout the plate and also help um, that weld form, help it to actually become, you know, fused. So thick plates are very important that you use preheat. Um, it spreads out that heat so it doesn't stay localized and then put all that stress in it and then crack. So um, thick plates is a very common um, instance when you're going to need preheat. Hydrogen, or high hydrogen content is another reason that you would use preheat, or when you would use preheat. There's a phenomenon called a hydrogen induced cracking, and it, hydrogen causes it. So when you're preheating it up, you're getting the moisture out of that plate, and it's reducing the probability of having a hydrogen crack, all right? So high hydrogen content would be another uh, when you would use preheat, all right? So let's kind of go over here to why, and I kind of said some of this stuff in the when part of it, but we'll go over it again, just because, you know, repeating things sometimes helps you remember it, right? So, why would you use it? Slower cooling. So it's gonna cool slower, which is gonna reduce cracking, all right? So the reason that that happens is, if you have a quick cool, stuff freezes in spots where it doesn't necessarily wanna be. So as that slower cool happens, you know, atomically, stuff is moving around and settling where it wants to be. So that is gonna reduce the possibility of cracking, all right? Uh, the fuse hydrogen, we went over that. Get rid of the hydrogen, it's gonna heat it up and cause that to you know, help get rid of that hydrogen. And as it's slower cooling, again, you're reducing the hydrogen, it's diffusing the hydrogen. Uh, reduces stress, and I wrote localized after that. Again, we're talking about um, you know, letting that heat flow throughout that part to make it not localized, right? So that's gonna reduce the stress. That localized stress is what's gonna cause the crack. If you preheat it, it lets the heat go throughout the part and it doesn't localize it, causing that stress, which then would cause some form of cracking, all right? And then last but not least, we went over good fusion. If you're on thick plates and you put a weld in it and it's um, just localized, it doesn't allow it to fuse as well. Um, without the preheat. The preheat allows that to heat up and wet into the material. So that aids in, in good fusion. So for all those reasons, that's why you would use preheat. And now we'll go over kind of the different ways that you can uh, preheat things. I know everybody thinks that it's just with a torch, but there's other ways of um, actually getting the preheat into the material. So we're gonna go over that next. I ran out of board, so I'm gonna rewrite it and then we'll go from there.
All right, so we went over when you would use it, why you would use it, and this is how you do it right here. And because welders have access to torches, this first one is probably the most uh, obvious and most used by far than any other heating method. And it is going to be open flame, either with a rose blood or a torch, whatever. Open flame, you blow it onto the actual part, it's going to heat it up, right? And then you probably test the temperature with a temp stick or a digital thermometer. Uh, the second most common, I would say, would be oven. And I have an oven out there. It's 250 degrees. If I know I got to weld like a cast iron part uh, the next day, I'll throw it in there overnight, and I know the whole part is soaked at 250 degrees, and we're ready to go in the morning. These other two are a little less common. Resistance, and I think resistance uses like a ceramic pad, and it heats it up with electricity, and then that's what, and that transfers the heat to the part. And induction it uses like a magnetic field to uh, create the heat to uh, heat up the part. So. I know far less about these two than the, the first two. I would say I have no idea the real numbers, but in my head it's 95% of the time it's open flame when you're going to preheat something in the welding world. And I just made that number up totally, so don't write that down. But you know, for the most part, if you're in the welding world, you have access to these, to these open flames and that's what they're going to use. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of what preheat is, when it's used, and why you use it, and how to actually apply the preheat to the part. Uh, I guess what we're going to do next, probably post heat, right? We did pre heat, now we're going to do some post heat in the next video that we do. So stay tuned for post heat, and thanks for watching and subscribing to TV Well, and we're going to get out of here.